Check, 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 one, two, check, one, two. Mommy on the Rocks. Casey Chops, make sure you follow us on Instagram at MIA on the Rocks. Follow us on YouTube. Hit that subscribe button. The energy in the city is so crazy right now. The Miami Heat are in the NBA Finals, so it's only right I get the official DJ from the Miami Heat, DJ M. Dot. My guy. My bro, it's good. My guy, it's good, man. How are Happy you? to be here, fam. Good to see you, man. Yeah. I always run into you at the Heat games and shit, doing your thing. You yeah. give me the salute. And, and, of um, course. Gotta show love, man. Yeah, That's man. how you right there. I'm like, yo, Casey got some ill seats, yo. I be, I be going by myself. I think to myself, like, damn, do I bring a girl and get, like, whacker seats? Nah. Or do I just go dolo go and spend dolo. for the one seat that's nice? You yeah, because you know with the, with the feet Emails sometimes like they're really not into the game and, and you're a hooper yeah so you're like you're focused locked like you're, you're locked in and with the female that might you know that might be just doing this yeah. and stuff like that and that, and that'll I aggravate me i'm like yo man yeah. there's 13 seconds left yeah that'll aggravate me you yeah. know what I'm saying? if i brought you on a date and you're just doing this and you yeah know, I'm, sometimes I'm it's cool game. regular season but we're in the playoffs so we gotta lock in bro. absolutely and um so i didn't know bro i didn't know whether to just have like dj talk with you but you actually just told me you're a hooper so we're both hoopers we grew, we grew up playing basketball yeah, so we like understand the game so we absolutely gotta, we could have a little DJ talk and a little bit of basketball talk. Um, you told me you're from Kendall, right? You're yeah, from down man. south. Yeah. And so, how did the DJing? Okay, let's do this. What came first, basketball or DJing? Oh, sports. Way before. Okay. Way before, man. I, I started playing baseball in Daytona Beach. Mm -hmm. We moved uh, to Miami when I was in like third grade. Okay. So just imagine, like Daytona is really like just just white or black. Yeah. You moved to. Yeah, it's yeah, diverse yeah. city. Like, like most of the countries like that. Yeah, yeah, it's like a culture shock, you know, but yeah. I fell in love immediately, man. So shout out to my mom for uh, wanting better, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And uh, immediately started in sports, man. Came here, was like, all right, started running track, mm -hmm. you know, 100 meters and stuff like that. And then moved into, uh, you know, tackle football. So mm -hmm. Pop Warner, I played for Hammocks Warriors and that was just, you know, so yeah. did that. And then transitioned over to basketball and basketball where it stuck, man. That so was the same was, with me, bro. Tried yeah. out football a little bit, then did the basketball thing, and I couldn't, I couldn't let basketball go. I was too uh, small to play in high school, like yeah. Uh, not, I'm sorry, football. I was too small to play in high school. Yeah. So I, I moved over to basketball and played in high school. So it was dope. That's what's up. And so when did the when did the DJing start? Uh DJing started later on, man. Like to be honest with you, I, I first started off as an MC. Okay. You know, so that's that's what helped me, you know be able to speak in front of an audience and be comfortable with it. I would, I mean, correct me if I'm wrong, but I would think being the Miami Heat official DJ, I think it almost requires you to be a better MC Absolutely. Than, than DJ. Yeah, yeah, I mean, for for it's personality work and you're right. a personality. So right. it's just personality work for the most part. Yeah, I have my, you know, my moments where I'm playing music, but mm -hmm. it's more so on the microphone, getting the fans riled up. And then also I can step outside of the booth and go host a contest mm -hmm. because that's where where right. I'm from. That's where I originated from in, in, in entertainment in general. So right. So how did, the, did the, how did the emceeing thing come about? Did you always have like an outgoing personality? Were you not shy? Or For sure. So in okay. high school, I was hosting prep rallies, but it's crazy. Once you get in college, you don't think that, you know, I just did it because I was a popular kid, supposedly. Right. And they gave me the opportunity to do it. But I get into college, I had no idea what I was going to do. Mm -hmm. I was really looking into education or law enforcement, if we keep it in the book. Yeah. It was one of the two. Like I knew I wanted to help kids Cause it was in me, you mm -hmm. know what I'm saying? And then uh, I, I linked up with with uh, a Kindle legend. His name is Mikey Sim. Okay, damn, I don't know him. Oh man, this guy's a Kindle legend. Okay. So uh, Mikey was at a party one day. He was DJing a house party. He doesn't really speak on the mic. I grew up, you know, mm -hmm. listening to like the Uncle Al's and, mm -hmm. and the Boulder Lovers and the Sugar Hill DJs and stuff like you're from the crib, so yeah. you know that. Now, if you don't know what we're talking about, if you ever been to a Jamaican party, it's like heavy a real mic work. Yeah. Heavy. Yeah. Well, Uncle Al and those people did the same thing, but with right. their own creativity. With that Miami bass vibe. Absolutely. Sugar Hill DJs, like it's legendary. Yeah. I call it I call it ride out DJs, because that's all okay. the way. They would just ride out. Yeah. Ride out now. Nah, yeah. Ride out now. Nah, nah. um, and and, I, it, and it was like a cause New York had their they were heavy on the mic too absolutely. when that was their style of DJing. But yeah. I feel the difference when we did it down here is they were like rapping with the song and filling uh -huh. in the words mm -hmm. and like you know what I'm saying? Yeah, and, yeah, and yeah. It was like how you could fill in your own words at certain right. spots, you know. And there was a party vibe here because mm -hmm. you got the BPMs are a lot faster. Right. So they're double. So it's 72, which is 144. You know what I'm saying? Mm. So it's, you know, you got the S.I. Morena and you got Uncle yeah. Al riding out yeah. just on the instrumental of that. Yeah. And you can get those, you used to get, like, I used to get these cassette tapes at the flea market. Yeah. Like, I'm probably dating myself, but like, no, I used good. to get like the cassette tapes at the flea market and listen to that. Well, fast forwarding, um, you know, going to that party, Mikey's playing. 
I'm like, yo, let me try it out. Let me see what's going on. Because I had a neighbor that had their equipment and mm-hmm. had those tapes and whatnot. And I went over there a couple of times, messed around, did it at the party. Mike, my, my guy, Mikey was like, yo, you're actually pretty dope at this, man. Like, mm-hmm. And then luckily he started blowing up in clubs mm-hmm. and took me along with him, man. Dope. Yeah, and Miami's just always kind of had that thing where it was like the DJ and the MC too yeah. in the club. Mm-hmm. And then I, kind of, I think that, that, that went away in like right. today's world. So you started off as the MC, and when did your like when did the picking up the turntables and learning how to blend and mix? That's a great question. So I've always had music in my in my blood for the most part. Mm-hmm. I was a drummer for 14 years, 13, 14 wow. years. So it's been it's been in me. Well, when I when the when the gigs stopped coming as an MC, so remember back in the day it was a DJ and an MC. Right. When they started to pull up, hey, That's- we can't afford both. It was like, oh shit, what do I do now? You know, and by that time. I'm already back in school that day. I got an internship at 99 Jams with Khaled Mm -hmm. and K Fox. I'm Mm -hmm. board hopping that show while I'm have I have my own show on Miami Dade AM radio when no one listens to because it's just no one knows about it. But for me, that gave me the experience Mm -hmm. and the confidence and the practice. You know what I'm saying? And then again, the gig stopped, man. It was like, okay, what do I do? Now Khaled's the type of dude, and this is why, like when people see on social media, they'll see me, you know chop it up with Khaled or pictures and whatnot. Like, this is 20 years in the making. Yeah, it's yeah. not just because I'm the heat guy. No, right, right, like, right, right. You were with like him my, from the beginning. My, like my, this is my guy guy. Like, wow. my guy. See, I didn't know that about yeah, you. Either, man. Yeah, man. But I, I, it's one of those things. Like, I just, for me, it's always been like, if you know, you know. Like, I'm not right. one of them like, hey, look. Nah, man. Yeah, if you know, yeah. you know. Like, yeah, so it's, it's I know cool. a lot of MCs that went through that same exact kind of like thing where it's like, oh, they're not booking MCs anymore. Like, I think I'm yeah. going to have to learn how to DJ. Yeah. You know? And when you do, because I feel like, it's almost easier to be an MC and learn how to DJ than it is to be a DJ and learn how to MC. I agree. And I heard, I think Conflict said that, and I, and I agree with him a while ago. I say what I've seen. I think he said that as well. But I think it's, the, the transition is easier because it's, a lot of people just can't talk on the microphone. I was going to say, I, 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 I might even go as far as saying that DJing is something you could learn and MCing more or less is something you just got to have in you. Gotta you got to have it. Yeah. You got to. You have to. Yeah. Because if you look at, look at all the DJs now that just, Press and play and doing this and doing that. So yeah. anybody can put some music together, right. right? Now it takes a person to rock a party. It takes a person to be able to elevate it to another to give level. The set personality. Yeah. yeah. And then, you know, if you could do that on the microphone, oh shit, it's over. Yeah. It's over. Now you're blending both. So back um back when I was interning, Khaled is a this is funny. Khaled is a person that would always ask the label for six copies of records. There's no way he he yeah. needed six vinyls. There's right. no way. He, he liked doubles. Right. He definitely liked doubles because he would yes, go back and forth. for six is OD. Well, because I'm his guy, right. then I started building my vinyl collection, vinyl collection, mm. vinyl collection, vinyl collection. And then that just, it was like, okay, I got friends that I've been around the industry for so long as an MC, being around these, these DJs. Mm-hmm. It's like, okay, well, this guy can teach me this. This guy can teach me that. This guy can teach me this. This guy can teach me that. I can count the eight. Right. You know, I got rhythm. I played drums my entire life. Mm. So the blending was like, okay, cool. Then it was just like, all right, so let me learn basic cuts that just just on my rhythm, just right. my, you know, playing snare drum and and you know, high school and right. college. You let me, you know, try to do these basic cuts and stuff. And then it uh it just all came together, bro. Yeah, it was similar. Yeah, similar. I feel like when you have that bait, like for me, it was in high school making beats. I didn't start DJing, but I just knew how to make beats. So yeah. when I decided to learn how to DJ, I already knew music theory. I already knew rhythm. I already knew yeah. how to count bars. So you pick it up quick. Yeah, you know? yeah. It's like for, for newbies, they got to learn, okay, blend in the chorus. Yeah. But like we already kind of knew that because we've been, you know, I've been hanging out in clubs. You were making beats. So you right. kind of know. So it's just, yeah. it, it's, I think it was an easier transition, gotcha. you know, when you have that music background. Gotcha. Now it wasn't easy. I mean, it was. It's work. Yeah. Oh, you know, it's work. You yeah. know, it's 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 definitely work. But uh, that's you know, it, it popped off after that, man. That's dope, bro. So when does the the Miami Heat thing start with you? Does that come from a relationship with Irie? Absolutely. So Irie's uh, my mentor. Irie's the reason why I am who I am right now. So I, I credit a few people for my success. It's Mikey Sims, Irie, Khaled, mm-hmm. K Fox, Jamie Fox. Wow, dope. Those and God. Right. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So so. Correct me if I'm wrong, but and obviously I think I'm gonna I'm gonna get Irie in here as well. But Irie's a legend for the people that don't know, and he was the first Miami Heat DJ, and, and I the, believe he was sports. Period. I was gonna. That's what I wanted to say. I believe he was the fo- damn. I was gonna say NBA, but you're saying sports. Sports. So be clear, DJ Irie for the Miami Heat was the first DJ to be a DJ for a professional sports team. team. Yeah, and even college because that wasn't heard of. That was unheard of <sighs> in college too. Now you see a lot more college. Like I DJ for FIU. 
right. and host for FIU. Wow. It's 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 common now. You know, right. you see DJs in baseball, you see DJs in hockey, you see DJs right. everywhere now. Irie was the first. He's the godfather. Wow. So you know, not just the NBA, just the Godfather. Because and it works here. Well, he's a, the Godfather outside of the NBA Facts. too, as well. Because but a lot of Facts. people don't know him. But he's. I, I think when you talk about the Mount Rushmore of Miami DJs, yeah, I like, think Irie's got to be one of them on there. Oh, for sure, thousand percent. You know, who else you got on there? I was gonna ask you. That's a good uh, question. I, I I'm got. Gonna, I I'm got gonna have to say. Okay, I'm gonna. Okay, I think I could do it. I'm gonna say Irie, Khaled, yeah, I'm there. Laz, and I might have to put just Uncle Al. Okay, I'm gonna do those four. I like and it that. might be easier for me to make radio DJs and club DJs, and I could do two different like that. But if I'm just have to combine everything, I think I'll have to do that. I rock with it. I, I have no, I have no discrepancies on that. Yeah. What's now, your... now, if you separate radio from clubs, then I would throw in uh, like a Mauricio. Yeah. Like Epps was. I mean, Epps grew right. Like yeah, Epps was doing his thing. Yeah. Man. I was. Is, I was like, see, I was too young when Epps was really in his like glory days. But I used yeah. to hear. Like I didn't, I wasn't from like the '90s South uh -huh. Beach era, you know. Yeah, so I don't, yeah. I know, I heard of the Sugar Shack days yeah. and all that. But yeah, I was too young for that. But like late '90s, early 2000s, I was, I was in high school. But like early 2000s and stuff, Epps was. So who's your, who's your four? If you got to choose the four, uh, I'm, I'm gonna add those two up there. So you uh, said, you said Irie, Epps. I gotta show love to Mauricio. Mauricio, Mauricio was doing his thing. Remember, Mauricio was. Was hanging out with, uh, yeah. you know, Madonna and shit. Yeah, yeah. Marisa was doing mansion on, on, on yeah, you know what I'm saying. And, yeah, and, and remember, rest in peace to AM. Marisa and AM were like yeah. that. Yeah. So yeah. like, I, I, I can credit. I, I, I can be comfortable enough to to credit Mauricio for kind of breaking the open format in this area mm -hmm. because Mauricio was following under AM's umbrella. Right. So AM would hit you with. A hip hop joint, and then the next song would be rock, and you're yeah. like, "What the?" But you're like, yeah. "Oh shit, I'm bugging. This is dope." Yeah, and you're like, "What?" And then they hit you with an R and B joint, and then come yeah. back and hit you with like four hip hop joints back to back. That's crazy. You say that because I, I said this to Conflict. I said I've always considered DJs like wrestling, and you have the WCW and the WWF. There's mm -hmm. two federations, and one federation comes from the party rocker, the godfather of that federation. I would say is like Kid Capri, party rocker. You know, DJ Camillo's in that federation. Yep. The MC heavy guys are in that federation. Yeah. Then on this federation, I feel like I, I say the open format AM, no real mic work, mm -hmm. but it's, it's but it's oh, Mauricio AM conflicts under that conflicts umbrella. So I, I categorize DJs under those two, yeah, those two vibes. You so know, speaking well, of conflict, he's literally my favorite DJ, like literally my favorite. Yeah. So when I was building the list, it was more just on the older people that you know, God, kinda, the gatekeepers, yeah, yeah, the yeah, gatekeepers. Yeah. Conflict, obscene, you know what I'm saying? Mm, yeah. Like, it's, I, yeah. Those, yeah. Those, those guys get Yeah, we're at all it, like man. children of them, you know what I'm yeah, saying? Yeah, like, they, like, they get at it, man. So, damn, we didn't finish it though. Your four is, is you said, what was your four? Uh, see, it? it's hard, man, because I'm, I'm gonna go with- You wanna do, you wanna separate yeah, them, like me club and radio? Them. Yeah, or? I wanna separate them, cause, cause Khaled, Irie, Al, and Epps, I mean, I'm sorry, and, and, um, and Lass, mm -hmm. they just, they were pioneers on radio. Right. They killed it. Right. Like they did their thing. Right. Now, some of those can transition into clubs, but right. let me just do clubs. I'll okay. go Mauricio. I'll go Mauricio. I'll go Epps. I'll go Conflict. Uh, and I probably got to go, uh, I got to go with Scene too, because it's Scene, get okay. it, man. And you know who I'm throwing? Okay. You know who I got to throw in get there? Some and I'm not going to say who I'm going to take out, but I got I to gotta take someone out of that. Maybe I'll take the last, I don't know. I, but I might have to throw in like Don Hot because Don okay, Hot has really made his yeah. name recently, bro, in the past 10 years. And, and I just saw him play uh, for the first time at, um, we went to Swan after we won mm -hmm. game seven. He, he destroyed, man. Yeah, he makes it a show. You yeah. know, there's, D, there's DJs who you, you're in the club and you're just vibing, you know, but then there's DJs that you're like, everyone's looking at him the whole time. Yeah. Like it's a show, you know? We had and, this, like, we had that little VIP room, but I wasn't in there. I was next to the DJ booth, just getting a feel. You know, we, mm -hmm. we want to get a feel. You know, yeah. I was just there. I was like, yo, he's, he's killing. And yeah. Yeah, he was, yeah, 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 yeah. Shout out to- but There's so many honorable mentions though. There's so many yeah, like dope yeah. people that do their thing. Yeah, man. nah, for sure. So, so um, when Irie becomes the first NBA DJ mm -hmm. for the Miami Heat, mm -hmm. are you right there kind of over his shoulder, like watching him right away? Or so when Irie, Irie was there early 2000s, I was still rocking the microphone. Didn't even think about DJing. But he and I had known each other forever in a day. What year did Irie start at? 2000. 
Oh, oh 99, actually. Really? That yeah, long ago? Yeah, 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 yeah. Wow. 99, 2000. For the heat? Yeah. Wow. Yeah, and changed the whole landscape of like how you see sports entertainment. Now, I'm telling you, Casey, like every sports yeah. team has it. What the NFL, yeah. you got one of hockey with my guy yeah. Genesis, you got baseball. And then so, they, they even had them on TNT and shit. Like, yeah. they were like that was never a thing either. Yeah. Bro. I mean, Shaq is... You know, because but in Miami it works, man. When people think of Miami, they think of a party town. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. So, and the one thing that brings us all together is what music, because we're so diverse. Right. You know, so Ira just took that and just ran with it, man. He took it and ran with it. And at that time, I was still trying to figure out what I'm doing with life. Mm -hmm. You know, in school, mm -hmm. yeah, DJ. I'm hosting some parties a couple times a week and whatnot. But I had no idea until probably around, I think it was uh, 2004. 2005, I uh, I opened up for Khaled at Club Bed. Damn, I remember that club. Khaled, Khaled for the people that are listening and don't know what Club oh, Bed was, Club man. Bed was a club that all the tables were beds. Oh. So it was just you would get your own bed and everyone would be, oh. that was a vibe. Oh, it was a vibe, man. It was a vibe. I mean, there's all kind of DNA on this. Yeah. <laughs> but, um, yeah, man. So it was, I opened up for Cali and it was like, okay, well, this is, this is what I want to do now. This is what it is. And um, having that relationship with Ari, this is how things, you know, come into play. Um, late 2005, early 2006, that's when we make the trade for Shaq. That was the year we won the championship. So mm -hmm. we make the trade for Shaq. They rebuild, you know, they have some players around Shaq. d ways a young, a young gun, a young stud. Mm -hmm. um, and Irie introduced me to Fox. We, when Fox was down here, Jamie Fox, mm -hmm. Fox was down here shooting Miami Vice. Fox goes out. I'm sure you've seen him plenty right. of times at you know your joints, right? You know, so he was down here shooting Miami Vice. Liked Irie's vibe. You know, they connected. You know, Fox was going on a tour that year because that's the that's the Gold Digger year mm -hmm. around it. That's slow jams, <sighs> but yeah, I mean. Yeah. It, and he had just won the Oscar. So he, he, there's nobody hotter, like yeah. hotter than him. Well, first of all, let's be clear. Jamie Foxx might be one of the most talented people on the planet. Like, Agreed. Actor, comedian, singer, songwriter. Yeah. Like, bro, stop. I, I, say, <laughs> I say we all have God-given talent, but I don't know what his arrangement with God is because he has way too much. He can yeah, do it all. Yeah, like, yeah. You're not supposed to be able to yeah, do it all. Yeah, though. that's crazy. Like, <laughs> I mean, we got talent. We can hoop. Yeah, you know, yeah, we can yeah. talk about personality. Yeah, yeah. You know, we can DJ. Okay, but like, how can you do seven, eight things? At the highest level. At the highest like, level. Yeah, it's crazy. Nah, it's crazy. <laughs> so um, he's getting ready to go on tour. Now, originally, uh, Irie and I were going to split the tour. But again, the momentum is big because Shaq's here. You remember when he came, they had the big diesel truck yeah, and he was yeah, shooting yeah, the ball. It, it was a party. It was like, yo. That so we were, we were projected to win. So, you know, just by Irie, we were originally going to split the tour, but just the logistics of it wasn't a good, mm -hmm. you know, it wasn't a good look because he'd have to do two home games and fly out and do what? three tour dates and come yeah, back. Boy, and yeah, do, yeah. It's just way too much. So that was the best thing that ever happened because I ended up doing the entire tour with Jay. And that was like 50 something dates. And he and I have been rocking for 16 years now. Wow. Because of that, that introduction. Wow. Yeah, man. You know what? I, 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 I want to, I want to put a pause in this story real quick because we brought up Shaq and I, I watched Shaq on drink champs the other mm -hmm. day. I don't know if you saw it, but Shaq said a quote, and bro, I kind of, <laughs> it was such a fire quote and it hit me so hard and I will ever have that quote saved and I might have to get it. He said, cause you know, Shaq is a DJ now. Yeah, Diesel. Yeah. They asked him, they're like, yo, why do you DJ? And sometimes I question myself and I say, damn, how long, how old am I going to be DJing? Like, when am I going to stop? Am I gonna, and he says, DJing is the only thing I've ever experienced that is close enough to a game seven. Wow. And when he said that, bro, I paused. I was like, wait. <laughs> and I had to like stop and think. Yeah. He said DJ <sighs> was the only thing to him that felt like a game seven. That rush, man. It's that energy, That bro. energy. That energy. It's a high. It's a, it's, sometimes I think it's not good for you. That's how crazy that high is. Like, I think, it, I agree. It's not, it's not good for you because you expect the same high. It hires your baseline of like excitement. You know what I'm saying? And, like, And every venue, you're expecting the same energy. But even though you could be killing KC... You might not be receiving that same energy, and as a DJ and as creators, we're right. like, man, fuck, right? Man, why can't why? You know, I'm killing them right now. I know I'm killing them, but they're just 
But that's take, bro, but even, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah, but that even applies to outside of DJing in the club. Just the regular, when you, people don't understand, like when you're, because be clear, we both have rocked I've, arenas, yeah. stadiums, like Facts. had thousands of people, clubs yeah. that are jam packed. And when you talk to people and they respond to you and like ah, crowd, like, mm -hmm. and you're the one on the stage and the spotlight is on you, it's, it does a bad thing to your ego, but it yeah. also like, it's a high that you're not going to really get anywhere else. No. And I could imagine him saying that about game seven, like where else are you going to get that type of high? So when you're just running through regular life and people are excited about mid-level shit to you, it's yeah. like, it's, it's like, it's cool, you know, yeah, but like, yeah, yeah but yeah, it's, it's a pro and con to that. Yeah. But, I, um, that's why you just got to keep it even kill, man. Don't yeah. Just, you know, just keep it. Yeah, exactly. Just keep it right there. Um, so you do that tour with Jamie Foxx. Yeah. And then you come back and are you kind of just mirroring Ivy? So I mean, Irie? I'm come back. I, I mirror him. And then Irie puts me in place to be the first DJ in baseball with the Marlins. Ooh. So that was like, that was history in itself. Right. Like there had never been another DJ in baseball. So, right. it, you know, being under Irie's umbrella and his company at the time, yeah, obviously he broke sports in general. And of course the NBA, I broke MLB. Yeah. And did that. And, of course, and in Miami, it works because, like I said before, man, we're so diverse here. And music just brings us all together. It's almost like people care more about the party atmosphere Facts. than the actual sporting event. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Man, like, yeah. And this was back when it was at Dolphin Stadium. Yeah. This was back then, you know. Wow. So, yeah, there, and I was just on the weekends. And, you know, you get, you get the Cubs or you get the Mets or something. You're in there. You're in that bitch for like 50,000. Yeah. Easy. Easy. Yeah. Like, Dolphin easy. Yeah. So... We did that and then uh, made the transition to, uh, to you know, fill in for him once he just got bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger mm -hmm. and did that for, uh, for quite some time and, until he passed yeah. the torch, man. Yeah. So when, when, how, when did he pass the torch to you full time? Uh, this is my third season of doing so. Oh, the, so like pandemic-wise probably. Yeah, like pandemic. So I remember opening up uh, after the bubble, we had a game the day after Christmas. Nobody in the arena just buried it myself. And it was a nationally televised game too. It was like yeah. on ABC. And they just kept showing myself and Bernie because there was nobody I in the arena. I hated that bubble shit, oh. man. To like to keep it a buck with you, bro. I hate it. I didn't even watch the NBA that. I'm like, I can't really? watch this. It don't feel real. Short season, you got video screens of the crowd with fake noises. I, I couldn't do it, bro. I was like, you know, I'm gonna chalk this up. And I'm mad that he went to the finals low key that year because Straight I didn't up. want it to count. I'm like, the one season I didn't want to count, like we were like nice. Like, yeah, I, was, I, I but, wanted it to count. I didn't yeah. care, you know, but yeah, opening back up that year and it was just... Ivy had gotten bigger and bigger and bigger, and it was just time. And he was like, Yeah. Because he did it, what you said. So it was 20 years, basically. He 23, was, uh, man. 22. Wow. And that's every home game, right? That's every. That's pretty, well, not every, because he was, he was super big. So, right. like, I think, uh, you know, the LeBron years and stuff like that, he was doing the, like, almost half of the games, and I was still there doing the other oh, okay. half, but he was doing all the playoffs and stuff yeah. like that and whatnot. So. Fire, bro. Yeah, so man. you're in your third season, man. You have that arena lit, bro. Like, and I love that you play Miami music, bro. Yeah, it, man. It wouldn't it wouldn't feel as good if 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 it was someone in that position that wasn't from here. You I know think what I'm saying? it's a collective effort. So it's it's me DJing, and we got people that run stuff upstairs with clicks. You mm -hmm. know, that's what we call it. Well, hot shot. Um, those are like the power timeouts and stuff like that. Um, but what's cool about it, man, this is what the NBA likes about us. This is why a lot of other uh, team personnel, like game directors, come down here and see what we're doing. The NBA loves that we rep Miami. So you're going to hear me play Luke. You're going to hear me play mm -hmm. Al. You're going to hear me play JT Money. You're going to hear me play Khaled. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm going to play these artists and pay homage to them because they're- We're Miami. Know, yeah, well, this is Miami. Yeah. And it works. And I'm going to play last, you know? Yeah. I'm going to play Block Party. I'm going to yeah. play yeah. Miami Miami based music. Yeah, man. Have you ever had a moment to where like, like whether it's in a visiting team or people come to you like, yo, what is this music? Have you ever had like, or like, no, you know? No, no. Cause, cause I, Miami is a whole nother world. Cause yeah. you know, Philly, New York, Chicago, it's all kind of interchangeable. Right. You could kind of put the same DJ there, play the same music yeah. more or less. Yeah. But in Miami, it's like, it's a different, it's a different world, bro. But it's cool. Cause we can, again, we're so diverse. We can rock, we can hit the Miami bass. We can hit the hip hop or we can hit the, the Bad Bunny, the Spanish. Or we can yeah. hit the Bad Bunny. You know what I'm saying? Like it's, it's, it's dope, man. And it's, fine, it's a collective effort, man. We got some good people that. Dope, man. What do you, um, okay. So let's talk about this team right now. Yeah, this man. team, 
first of all, you know, I've never been so emotional. Okay, let me say this. That game six loss was probably emotionally the worst sports loss to me I've ever witnessed in my life. I remember growing up Heat Knicks, you know what I'm saying? I was a little kid going through that heartbreak. You know what I'm saying? I went through the heartbreak of, of, of us missing the three-peat with LeBron, you know, you know, with the Spurs and shit and, and the Mavs. But like when when I think about that game six, bro, with with that putback, I don't think I've felt, you know, an emotion. So I've never left the arena so early in my entire life. I packed up, I skirted out the back, I went home. Now the rebuttal to that is that was the best thing to happen to us mm. in that position. Why? Because what did we do in game seven, KC, we came out yeah. intense and we stepped on their neck. But a lot when they relaxed, when they were just chilling, they were like daysical, you know what I'm saying? We had that, we had that hunger because because of what happened to us and because of that heartbreak and that. But you see, I was predicting it the other way, like most people were. I was predicting it like, okay. Are we going to come back from that gut punch? We're going to be in Boston. It's mm -hmm. going to be lit in Boston. Like, yeah. you know what I'm saying? I wasn't as confident because of that. You know, I thought that would, would have hurt us. I, I thought it could have went either way. I thought right. the momentum has shifted in favor of them because they, they, they stole one from us. However, you should have saw them. Like, they were just down and defeat. They were just... You know, so yeah. you can take that and use it as momentum. You can take mm -hmm. that and use that as like a chip on your shoulder. Yeah. And and it and they did, man. Cause yeah. again, Boston came out, hella chill. We came out like, nah, y'all stole one from us. We about to prove yeah. the point. So it yeah, worked, man. man. How do you feel about this team? What separates it from the you know past heat teams um to you? So I, I told someone this the other day. I was there for the LeBron years. I got the back to back rings. Oh shit, I've been bro. Oh man, no. Show that shit to the camera, bro. Oh, my Talk bad. Shit, here you go, Casey. Go ahead. Damn, Talk bro. Down. Sheesh. So. <laughs> it's all good. Oh, that's crazy. So, uh, what's cool is that that, that, that was just an, an, an insane time for the city. Mm -hmm. I mean, LeBron is. I've been in areas with LeBron several times. Him and Jamie are cool. Obviously, being affiliated with the Heat. LeBron is larger than life, literally larger than life. Now, those years were just exciting because LeBron was the type of dude that, yeah, he's going to play, but you're also going to see him at Critical Mass riding the bike. You're also going to see him at brunch, hanging out. Mm. Like, LeBron was out. Yeah. Like, LeBron was like a man of the people. Like, yeah. he was doing that. And those years were exciting. But we were projected to win all four years. Right. So it didn't feel the same as it, fit, as it felt now. As it feels now. Yeah, the because, expectations set everything. Yeah, like they they had us down. They, we weren't supposed to get in the play in. We lose the first play in, win the second one, sneak into the eighth seed. Everybody wrote us off to lose to the Bucks. Did that. Okay, well, the Knicks are playing hot right now. Like, let's see what happens. The Knicks are, of course, projected to beat us again. We beat them. And it's like, okay, well, bosses for sure gonna take care of them. Like they they have no. So I think now. I, I'm I'm a lot more emotional now because we're we're the underdogs. Like right. we, we came from shit supposedly. Right. I, when those four years with LeBron, we were destined to win, yeah, dog. Yeah. We just we only got two out of four when it should have been all four. All four yeah. If we keep it in the buck, you know. Yeah. So I think now is I, I'm a lot more excited now. And then the fact that the personal aspect of it. I'm, I'm the main guy now. Yeah, so now I it's can, your show. Yeah, so remember back, I didn't do the playoffs back then. I just did like the East Plaza and stuff mm. like that. Like I didn't do the games. Right. Now I'm in the arena. Like I'm rocking the game, so it's my show. So it just feels even Damn, better. Damn, you about to be in there man. for the finals, bro. Yeah, I know. NBA Finals DJ. Boy, do, you have any, do you have any like plan, anything you're going to do different or is it just- yet, No, so, but just bring that intensity. This is usual. Man. Just bring that the intensity, bring yeah. that energy, which is dope. And I know- like the fans are gonna be on a thousand. They're they're going to be lit. Like you know, even game six. They from the from the first hit I had on the mic, which is a, a rally tower away. It was just, I mean, and they were there early, Casey. Yeah. And you know how people knock us for yeah, you know yeah, showing up. Yeah, with, yeah. I mean, we had an undisclosed location, but we're we're close. Okay. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So my man can get there when he gets there and still be okay. Yeah. yeah. Like the majority of America, like Miami, like yeah. they get there when they get there. Yeah. You know, they, they show up when they show up and it is what it is. But game six to the T, everybody in there, just waiting, just waiting, just waiting. So I think they'll be, uh, they'll be excited. 
Yeah, man, we got, and it's just the fact that we don't really have superstars, you know? Like, we have Jimmy, but it's, what is it, seven undrafted players? Yeah, like, seven. there's something about this organization, like, that just, bro, they, Pat Riley, the culture could just turn you into a dog. I mean, I say joke sometimes, like, you know, it's a joke, but it's a joke, people. But I be saying, like, yo, we pick up players from, like, Home Depot, and then, <laughs> and then Riley turns them into, like, dogs, like, you know? But it's just a joke. But, like, but, but. But yeah, man, like, yeah, something about our culture, man, that just, that, can you speak to that? Because obviously, I don't know if we're in the locker room, you're not in the locker room, uh, but like, no, what, but what about the culture that you see? The, the cool thing about the culture is that, excuse me, <coughs> it's real, dog, mm -hmm. and it's legit real. Like, you're going to come in there, you're going to work hard, mm -hmm. you're, you're, you're not going to have any excuses, mm -hmm. because you're going to be held accountable, mm -hmm. and people will hold you accountable no matter of your ego or status. So if you're not doing what you're supposed to do, somebody's going to tell you you're not doing what you're supposed to do. Mm. And you, it's, just, it's just a brotherly thing. It's like when you hooped in high school. Yeah. If you, had, if you weren't you know, doing your thing on the court, one of your brothers is going to tell you, like, right. okay, so what's going on? Like, you know what I'm saying? Step right. it up. So, and, and, and that's a cool thing, man. You got a bunch of, co like, a bunch of collective guys that just that all buy in man and you know what it is i don't f I, I can <coughs> honestly say that i think everybody on that team is like egoless yeah. like there's no ego nah, you know you don't even have to deal with a, a superstar that everyone could get treated the same yeah. way bro and i think that's the best for sports i think as long as you do your job you're good yeah just do your job man just do your job and i and i like some of these guys that you you know you mentioned the seven undrafted guys i like that they're getting their shine man yeah. they're getting national exposure i remember the game three blowout. Mm -hmm. I think I, that was the game I saw you. Yeah. Yeah, that was yeah. The, yeah. You saw who got interviewed, Gabe Vincent. Yeah. That's national television, dog. Gabe Vincent sitting with TNT. No one knew who Shaq. he was a couple months national before. National television. Bro. So it's crazy. Another little fun fact I guess I'll drop on, on MIA on the rocks. Shaq's my guy. Mm -hmm. I hate dropping these names. Shaq's my guy. Shaq comes back at the end of game six <laughs> before he goes up to TNT. Says, Peace to me. All right, Emdala, I'll holler at you. I'll see you in the finals. After game six. After game six. Wow. First time telling that story. Wow. He said, all right, Emdala, I'll see you in the finals. I was like, and, and me, you know, I told you, I got out of there quick. I'm emotional. I'm putting my stuff in my bag. I'm yeah. like, I don't want to talk to anybody. And it, you know that corner where I'm at? Yeah. Everybody walks past. Everybody has their opinion on something. And then they're walking past KC and going where? Right into the club. Mm hmm I'm ready to get out of here because I'm I'm like almost disgusted Stunned. that you yeah. guys are walk. You saw what just happened, and y'all want to go to the club? Nah, bro. I'm ready to go home and drive a hundred miles per <laughs> hour to get there because yeah. I'm just like I'm just heartbroken. But Shaq said that man. I was like, oh man, that's that's dope, man. It seems like why does it seem like Barkley? It seems like everyone hates on us, bro. Why does it? Do you get that feeling? Maybe you're not. I mean, I'm watching from TV a lot of the times, and I'm and I'm and it's like Kenny Shaq, mm -hmm. and it seemed like I mean, it seemed like Shaq was the only one really like defending us. I guess because he knows the culture, Shaq but it just seems culture. Barkley, Kenny, like even all the analysts, they well, just it seems like they just hate on us, bro. They do because it's it's not the same hype as when we had the big three, right? Well, again, when we were projected to win all four years, right? Now you mentioned the seven undrafted guys, yeah, and you mentioned you know just being able to being put into a role and, and flourishing in that role. But there was no, the expectations were really low for him from, from the media. And that's why I don't even watch that stuff, man. Yeah. I'm not on Twitter. I don't care what you have to say. I'm not watching their post game commentary. Cause I know you're going to hate, I know Shaq going to ride with us cause he's about the culture, yeah. but the rest of them, I'm not watching the ESPN. Like I, I, I do remember, uh, during the big, the big three era, those four years, LeBron took a, a social media pause, disappeared. He, he, he wouldn't be on social media. Did he? Yes. Damn, I don't remember that. Every year, for four years here in Miami, did not go on social media. He ain't reading that shit. During the season? During, or just during the playoffs. Oh, I do. I think I do remember. Scratched it. He ain't reading none of that stuff. I think we got guys that are like that as well, man. Like, hey, man, just, just focus on the main thing. Keep the main thing the main thing. That's, yeah. that's, our, that's our quote. Did you see the clip? I saw a clip of uh, they were getting, uh, when they were accepting the trophy in Boston, they were, uh, uh, um, Ernie was interviewing uh, Bam, mm -hmm. and he asked him, yo, what'd you guys, uh, how'd you guys, you know, do what you did? And he said that Spo showed us a video, a 15-minute motivational video 
um, that really got us hyped. And then they would turn to ask, and, you, and it shows Spo like deer in the headlights. Yeah. And then they asked Spo, what was that a video you showed him? And he's like, don't worry he's about that. You. It was like a, but Spo looked real nervous that Bam brought that up. Yeah. Do you have any speculation on what that video could have been? I have no idea. Did you see the clip, by the way? Or, or did yeah, you see that? I, I have no idea what it is, but Bam's okay to say that, but not disclose the actual video. Yeah, it was, they said good. it was a 15-minute video. I'm here like, yeah. damn, what? If I was Spo, what would I show my players yeah. 15 minutes for a 15-minute? And he he was the video guy, so he knows yeah, how to put some shit to put, together. Yep, absolutely. I'm here like, damn, what could they have showed him? I, I bet you that, that that clip of Gabe Six was in there. That putback was probably somewhere in there. You know, I was speculating. I was just trying. I had a conversation with Joy. You know Joy? Yeah, yeah. I was Joy talking Taylor. to her, yeah. And I was like, yo, you know what I would do? And, and I commented under the video on ESPN and mm -hmm. I had like 500 likes on the comment. I was like, you know what Spo might've did? He might've took all those racist ass Boston fans, made a montage, took uh, with the Boston racist history, showed them that shit. And you can't lose after that. You know, no, I was like, yeah. try, or Joy was like, possibly, but maybe he just showed them clips of the media hating and shit. Yeah. But I'm just like, you know, like what could that have been that he, that first of all, it has to be private, right? If it was yeah, a movie, he could have told them. Like, private. But like, I don't, I don't think it, it was that. I think, uh, Spo does a really good job of, you know, his, his, his PR and stuff. Mm -hmm. I think it was more so just a bunch of clips put together, just motivational things, man. Yeah. And, and I, and I almost, I'm almost winning the bet that that put back was probably at the end of it. Mm, yeah. and, and, and just- Maybe and, all of them talking shit, all the media. And the media, because like, yeah. I mean, remember it was 3%, right? Yeah. 3%. That's crazy. That's crazy, how did they man. That's crazy. Knowing how well Jimmy was playing heading into the playoffs, and then even in the playoffs. And then one thing about us, is, see, see, I'm sure we'll touch even on this. Even mid-series, it was still like 5% after we were like 2-0 and on them. Yeah, even, yeah, it was crazy. Even 3-0. God, that makes it... But see, that gets me more hype, bro. That makes me more emotionally invested into that shit. So what know? was what was the narrative at 3-0? Oh, Boston could be the first team to come back 0-3 and win. It was not like, hey, Miami's playing really well. Watch out. They're cooking. They're, they're gelling on all of a sudden. They're coming together. Yeah. All cylinders are coming. You know, they're playing well together. They got the confidence. They just blew them out by 20. It wasn't that, bro. It was Boston could be the first team to yeah. come back from 0-3. In sports, in like in basketball, I'm surprised history. they weren't more charged up in Game Seven. Boston was like relaxed. I was like, man, I thought in my mind, I'm like, damn, it's gonna be dangerous. They're gonna be the first team. I thought they would be charged up, you know, but they came out flat. I but, was surprised. But that's the way the momentum shifts. So yeah. I bet I'm willing to bet that on their plane ride back to Boston, pss, pop, they're 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 on a thousand. They playing spades in the back. They're yeah. doing this. They're doing that. On our plane ride, I think we didn't leave that night. I think we left the next day. Our playing ride was probably quiet as hell. Yeah. Just replaying of what's going on, locked yeah. in. And I think, again, I, I'm willing to, to say and go out on the limb and say that that was probably the best thing that could have happened to us. Yeah. Was losing the way that we lost. You think, okay, now as far as that game six goes, ugh, my conspiracy like antennas went up because I'm there analyzing. They added time to the clock. Did you see that? Like yeah. they added, like, how did you feel about that? Did you feel like we got robbed at all or did you feel? I, the calls were a little off because we went up by one and every possession after that, it was a foul, bro. Like, I, And it was stupid fouls and I'm watching it on TV so I could see it. Yeah. I think for me, there was a clip of me that I posted. I'm, I'm locked in trying to find a song to play just in case we go up and they call a timeout or whatever. So I, I really did like, I didn't see any, any of that stuff until I went home, mm -hmm. turned it on because I heard the speculation like, oh, it was 2.1 to three seconds and that. And I was like, okay, well, let me look into this. And then I made a, mis I made a mistake. I went on Twitter and I saw- <laughs> Damn it, that's a mistake. Yeah, I know. I, I should have done it. But I, I went on there and I saw the replays and I'm like, oh man. So I don't know if it's necessarily a conspiracy theory. I just think, uh, I, I don't even know what they even said after the, what they say, the file occurred before well first they were saying that the, the clock and the tv clock are two well, different. different clocks mm -hmm. you know what i mean they but, but they're showing at three seconds like that he's not even fouled yet yeah. so how could you have three seconds like and i'm here like yeah you know you, i mean you don't want to speculate too hard it'll make you go crazy but like now nah, we won we, yeah. we're good yeah yeah, we're yeah in the finals you know, they're, but they're, they're, how do you feel one about, two three Tulum. <laughs> how do you feel about the officiating in general just in the league like and the way the game has changed you know like 
I think uh, this is what I can speak on without getting in trouble. Um, the NBA is is a business, right? Mm-hmm. You you like when it's like baseball. Like you you like going to a game when it's probably seven six, and there's like five home runs. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. The one oh, well we're sports guys, so I can appreciate the shutout. I can appreciate the one oh. Right. I can because that was my first sport, and I just love sports in general. Right. The average fan probably won't appreciate that. Yeah. Same thing with like football. No, right. no one's gonna appreciate. You right, know, the seven zero, the so ten zero. Do you think the refs are kind of like conditioned to kind of call the game in a way that keeps it close? I don't know. I don't think that. I don't think that they're necessarily conditioned to doing that. But I think, you know, like let's say you got fouled and you had some words with the, but, but respectfully, you mm-hmm. said, "Hey, watch this." You know, next time, I think in their con- like their subconscious, they're, they're going to look for that specifically, and then they may catch it two or three possessions later. Mm-hmm. Does that make sense? Yeah. Yeah. So I think, and then, you know, when the game gets a little tighter, typically I would see that they, they kind of, you kind of hold the whistle. Right. You know, unless it's like something obvious, but I, it's, it's, it's weird, man. And now I feel like with the whole replay thing, there should be no excuse to have a call wrong. You know what I'm saying? Like they're stopping the game a lot for that now. You yeah. Know? But then, but then you're also going against your, original call and some of those things work when it's right. you know it's not gonna favor a particular outcome in a game think we're right? gonna have like ai refs soon bro no <laughs> man, we can't we got we gotta we gotta have like the cameras uh, calling fouls i know man? right now we gotta have the, the cool thing about the finals now they're gonna have that uh that string that's the camera on the string oh they, they do that it comes the in the finals, finals. yeah wow. so you're gonna get like the aerial view it's gonna be dope <sighs> yeah it's gonna be dope damn bro but it's gonna be, it's gonna be good, man. It's gonna be uh, the city's gonna be on fire. I think people are counting us out. Uh, Do you like you know what I, uh, I had this conversation with my boy the other day? Mm-hmm. Everyone went out after the the, the, the we beat Boston yeah. in the streets. I'm still with, now. In the streets with the pots and pans and shit. Yeah. I told my boy I'm, I'm different, but I told my people I was I was like I don't know if I like that because we're celebrating second place. Like I like like wait we have to keep the same. Uh, we got to keep the same grit and focus. I know the players are probably like that, but as fans, yeah. it's like. Let's not get too hyped too quick. I know we won. We beat Boston. We got our revenge. But yeah. it's like, don't pots and pans on Bird Road. Not yet. Let's yeah. do that. I think uh, there's just, there's always going to be the cocky heat fan. Yeah. But I don't knock it because it brings our community together. You're right. We love seeing it online. It's dope, You're man. Right. Like, and they had been doing that from way back when we won our first one in 06. That had been yeah. a thing. So Eastern Conference celebrating like that has been a thing like pots and pans when we win. Yeah, but, pots but and pans I know that been, for the final. I know that for the finals. Yeah. But like, did we always do that for the Eastern? I'm conference? pretty sure we probably did it for ECF too. Just yeah. going to the finals. Yeah. yeah, I'm pretty sure we did it for ECF. Do other as cities well. do that? No, nah, right. we're different. Yeah, I was gonna say. But, but I yeah. mean, we're you know, yeah. we got the Hispanics. We got the pots you're right. And you're right. We we do want to find any excuse to party, to party. But then the other side of the corner, I see like act like we've been here before. You know no, what I'm saying? Like the not same us, man. Yeah, we got the cocky heat fan. Now I'd rather them do that than go online. And post the heat and four, heat and six. I don't like that. Uh, yeah. That's the shit I don't like. Gotcha. I don't like that. If you want to go out and celebrate with the community, all for it, man. Because that was a vibe. Bro. I was looking at only in date. I yeah. was like, oh, that was dope. That's cool. You know, went to the club again. Don Hot was shouting out the heat mm-hmm. staff. We're all in there. It was fun. I again, I just don't like the 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 predictions. Uh, like that's that's what that's what rubs me the wrong way. Yeah. If you want to celebrate, cool. Damn. So we can't predict what's gonna happen. Um. I know, but I, as hoopers, yeah, we can give a logical thesis on it. I guess <laughs> he's a thesis. Yeah. Uh, okay. I think that, bro, we're gonna give them a really good series because we just have that energy and that grit. And like I said, we have no egos on the team, bro. So this is not about an MVP. This isn't about you know. This is about a team of people. There's no one that sticks out. Maybe just Jimmy, but he's the most unselfish star player I've ever seen in my life. Absolutely. I think um, the key to us, and this is what other teams failed, the key to us is what? Shooting the ball. If we shoot the ball. So we'll talk a basketball talk for those that don't, like Mm -hmm. we hoop. At any given point, Casey, we have four shooters on the floor. Right. Four. At any given point. Right. That's hard to defend. Right. Now they're they got length. I was gonna they're say bigger. they're big Pauls. Thousand percent Pauls. They they are bigger Pauls. <laughs> but can that six ten 
guy that's at the low block run out there to the wing and put a hand up and contest the shot. You're right. When when Dunk is letting it rip, You're when right. Max is letting it fly, when Gabe is letting it fly, when Caleb is letting it fly, when Kyle is letting it fly. The only one that's not shooting yeah. that when K Love is yeah, letting he, it fly. Yeah, he's even hitting. So the only person that's not shooting that shot is Bam. So again, that helps us out. And this is why I think the other teams struggle because, hey, if we're shooting the ball and we, we yeah. started shooting the ball well at the right time, headed right into the playoffs. Yeah. You know? But then the flip side of that coin also is like, we got to limit their second chances, got bro, to. because they're going to, they're huge. Yeah. So you got to put know. a bite in somebody. Yeah, because we had what, for the most of the Boston series, what we had, Struess playing the four? Yeah, had Struess or Caleb. Playing. Yeah. 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 Shit, let's talk about Caleb, bro. Yeah. How, did you do you think he should have got MVP over Jimmy? There was a good conversation on. That. I think uh I think it was one one A. Yeah. I think it could have gone. I think game one through three might have to give it to Jimmy, but then three through seven, maybe you gotta give it to Caleb. Like he, he turned into like, I don't know who he turned into, but that's crazy that could just happen, right? Like someone who is just like But that's that's all under the leadership. Of of Jimmy, making people in confident. That confidence. Yeah, yeah. Get, it's still in that confidence in, in your players around you. Like Jimmy's okay. I think what what did he score in? Uh, was it game six? He had like fourteen or something yeah. like that. It was something really low. Yeah, but we were still in the game or whatnot. You yeah. know, so that's just it's still in that confidence in players around you. And and you know, as a hooper, man, once you once you get you get the cooking. Oh yeah. man, the, the rim gets bigger. Shit. You feel like you can't miss. Caleb about to get paid, bro. Caleb, He's uh, about to get a... And then uh, and Duncan, man. That's my guy. Duncan's playing, just shooting the ball, man. Shooting yeah. the ball. <laughs> Cutting back door, doing, you know? Yeah. All right, they're overplaying you. Yeah. Give him a little slip screen, cut back Yeah, door. yeah. I'm glad he's not just hanging out at, no. the, at the... He's running that pick and roll good yep. with Bam, too. Got a like, couple I, layups, yeah. Yeah, he's he's attacking. I like that. Um, Bam is going to really have to step it up, you know? Um... Yeah, he kind of pissed me off a couple times late in the in the Boston series. You know, I think the key is just not to be hesitant. Yeah, some him and Jimmy went through spurts of just hesitancy. Like it was kind of like they didn't know what they wanted to do. You know, and but I think he's gonna be able to guard Joker if we gotta pick someone. It's someone agile and kind of light like Bam that's gonna be able to extend. You know, like and guard Joker. You know, like I think what the what's helped us in the playoff run, as you know. In the beginning of the season, and pretty much all of Bam's career, he would switch on high screen and rolls, which would leave us dead in the water in terms of grabbing boards because right. he's up there and he, he's a phenomenal defender. So he can guard your one, two, three up at the wing right. because he can move his feet and he's a right. phenomenal defender. But staying up there hurt us down low yeah. because Caleb's not big enough, Max is not big enough, yeah. Jimmy you know, is covering their best player. If you look at what's been happening now, show on the screen, mm -hmm. follow yeah. your big man, get back, put a body on somebody, get the rebounds, yeah. and that's helped us. Uh, hopefully, we get K-Love back. That's a big body. And that's a body that Joker- Extend, pause, like that can guard the three, like yeah. go out a little bit. And Joker has to respect that. Now, Joker's tall and- mm -hmm. you know, Serbian. Yeah. <laughs> but Joker has to respect that because K-Love will hit that- that deep jumper on you. Yeah. So that's going to take him out of the paint, um, which would be great for us, man. Again, because at any given point, we got four shooters on the floor. So if we, yeah. if we get K-Love back, that's a good yeah, look. Man. I, said, I, tweeted this. I tweeted this. I was like, uh, uh, Bam got to lead the league in dribbling off his leg, man. <laughs> I, I said this. <laughs> I was like, yo, come on, bro. It's like, you know, but he could take the, we could dribble. He takes the ball up the court sometimes, like, you know. Bam, but, is, uh, Bam is one of those Freak athletes. Um, you got to work out with like the Dolphins tight ends. Uh, That's what I need him to do. Like catch the ball, catch some football, like get his hand. His hands are a little bricky sometimes, you know? Like that's my only argument with him. He's kind of- Bam you know. just got to just be Bam, man. Bam, yeah. just know that your offensive game, like like you said, he can, he can take you off the dribble. Yeah. He'll jab and hit you. You know, he'll drive, spin, you know? Yeah. It's about that confidence. And I think he's going, he's going to be able to display that with the slower Joker on him. But I, I'm guessing that if, if we go big and K-Love starts, they'll put Joker on K-Love. Yeah. Yeah. And put like a, 
a Michael I Porter Jr. That, you think? Oh, yeah, they'll put a Michael Porter Jr. or something. My, remember, Michael Porter Jr. is like 16. Oh, yeah, yeah. Who's the other? Who's the other? Um, Aaron Gordon. Yeah, he'll be, on, he'll be on Jimmy. Yeah. Uh, KCP will be on like Max or something. Yeah. And then Gabe, uh, Jamal Murray will be on Gabe. I'm hype, bro. M dot. Anything you want to promote, bro? First, plug your social media so people can follow you. For sure, man. At DJ M dot on uh, Instagram, um, Twitter at DJ M dot tweets. I'm not tweeting right now during the playoffs. He's a LeBron ghost to, mode. Yeah, y'all not about to get me caught up. <laughs> oh, I, I'm, I'm, let me rephrase that. I'm not tweeting basketball yeah. right now. Like you'll see me tweet about going to the gym or something like that. But uh, man, it's been a pleasure, man. Thank you, you for know, pulling I, I know up, bro. You, I know you're you know? busy during this time. You know, there's a lot of events, a lot of things going on. Are you, during the away games, are you assigned to be at different watch parties and stuff? So I'll be at the watch parties because now we have all the watch parties at the arena. So tomorrow, our first home game, I mean, our first away game, I'm sorry. Our first away game Thursday, I'm not sure when this is going to air, will be at the arena. Our second away game Sunday, we're showing it at the arena. Cool. Then we come back Wednesday, home, Wednesday, Friday. Cool. So, so I'm doing a watch party. So if you guys are out east, go check out uh, M Dot for the watch party at the arena. If you're out west, I'm doing a uh, with only in Dade. We're doing a watch party at the Improv. That's what's so up. we'll be out west in Doral. So Just make sure you check one of us out. Yeah. And um, it's a beautiful time to be alive. The city and shit. The Panthers too. Like you know, like we got both teams like in the finals. That's crazy. I went to my oh. first hockey game, and it was in the playoffs. It was this last round. How was the energy? Oh. Yeah. Intense. Wow. Like they don't, they don't stop. They don't, they don't stop. Yeah. And they all, they all rock their jerseys, you That's, know, cause it's cold as hell. And yeah. so they all rock their jerseys, no matter like us, like, listen, I love our fans, mm -hmm. but you know, it's like a fashion show sometimes. Yeah, you're right. You know what I'm saying? Right. Like they, they're, they're dressed to, to be seen. You're right. Some of the women talking to you specifically. Who was, um, who, okay. Let, let's just some cool, fun questions. Who's, out of the celebrities that have always been around, you know, sitting courtside and stuff, who's kind of been the coolest you know, that you've met maybe, or the cool kind of like, maybe that you were surprised to meet that, oh shit, they're here. I talked to them. Um, The old yay. The what? The old yay. <laughs> oh, oh yeah. The old yay. That's important. Yeah, that was uh, a couple okay. years. Yeah. That's dope. That was cool. Uh, but they're, they're all pretty cool, man. Like they're all pretty much cool. Like I got a chance to shout out Diddy last game. Dope. I've uh, I've got a chance to shout out Drake, dab them up, cool. Like it's they're yeah. all it's all love, man. Because you know everyone and and you get this love reciprocated when you play at your different venues. Everybody loves the DJ. Yeah. Everybody, you yeah. know what I'm saying. So it's 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 a lot of love. But um, recently, that uh that towel wave I did with Mike McDaniel, the Dolphins coach. Ooh. I think they're 1.7 million on Twitter. Wow, 1.7. I like him, bro. I think we're, is, Dolphins are going to be nice next year. He's a, he is a ball of energy, bro. Like, yeah. he's, that, he's that dude. Yeah, he's my favorite. I think he's my favorite Dolphins coach yeah. for a minute. We're going to be nice, hopefully. He's a player's coach, man. Yeah. And, and, they, and they listen to him. I saw him, you know, later that day, well, that, that game, he's, you know, talking to Jalen Ramsey and just, you know, mm -hmm. talking to the players. And you can see that they have that relationship. It's not because there might be media there, like, recording it. No, mm -hmm. man, like, they, they really get down with each other. So. Man. Dolph is gonna be something to reckon with this year, bro. That's fire. For M dot, sure. thank you for pulling up. Love, Wait, man. I gotta I gotta end it with uh my favorite drop. For sure. My favorite, favorite drop. I gotta I gotta find a way to play this in the club. Let's see. Oh legendary. <laughs> Listen, Legendary. Man, that's, that's, that's another one of my mentors, man. Michael B is just incredible, man. That guy is phenomenal what he does. It, you know, just his catchphrases and stuff works in Miami. The Dos Menudos, that's mm. all him. The three, yeah. all him. The, the shit, me. And letting them say Butler, that's all him. He's a beast. That's two yeah. mini steps. Wow. That's all him. Damn, what else does he do? Well, he the, does the, the Dos Menudos all. is fire, is legendary. Yeah. Uh, yeah. That's that's all him, man. But we got a we got a dope collection. Eric Reed group, too. Man. Shout Eric out to Eric Reed, yeah. Jack, Jax. They're legendary. Jackson. Been there forever. We got Dale. You know, we got uh, Kelly B. Shout now. out to Uptown Dale. I'm gonna get him in here too. Yeah, man. Have you uh have you met like Riley? Have you yeah yeah yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, remember he sits right in front of me. And that's right. Just gives me the green light. Like he don't look around, like he knows I'm screaming. Yeah. And I'm getting the fans. It just he he just looks 
just look straight ahead, man, sure. which is dope. Because like yeah. sometimes I, early on in my career, I felt like I was like, let me see if Next I'm walking to the out like, yeah, 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 I'm walking <laughs> to like eggshells because I'm coming in like at 10, uh-huh. screaming, music is blasting. Because you know, we got to have that booth yeah. monitor turned up. You yeah. know? We got to feel that vibe. But uh, Riley's right there along with, with Zoe. Um, Shaq was sitting with them during this uh, during this run, but uh, yeah, man, it's Riley's a Riley's a good dude, man. Let's get it. Spo D- too. Spo. Yeah. Spo's a hip hop guy. Spo's a legend. Eric B and Rakim surprise you. Sheesh. <laughs> DJ M Dot, the official so, Miami Heat DJ Casey Chops, Miami on the rocks, baby Heat Nation. Let's go Heat. Sheesh.